Monmouth's blue plaque trail has added significantly to the townscape and the plaques themselves, because they become permanent features on the buildings, become part of the archaeology of the town. That's why we've come down the wider Chepstow to meet well-known local potter Ned Haywood. He's the man who made the plaques. Let's go and meet him. Well, here's Ned, the man who made the plaques himself. Now, the plaques have gone down a treat in Monmouth, but from your point of view, it's not just Monmouth, is it? No, um, we started making, the first set we made was for Usk, and we developed the technique for Usk, right. and it did take us a long time. Mm. It took us about a year to get it right. right. That's regular experiments and regular cracks and regular failings and regular kickings of the kiln. Oh, you see. Of course, you blame the equipment, not yourself. Uh -huh. But once we got it sorted, the next big project we did is Monmouth. Right. But then we started, I was approached by the City of London, so we do City of London. We do Brighton and Hove, we do the island of Guernsey, Brilliant. we do Glasgow and all points north, Brilliant. south, east and west really. Yeah, fantastic. And of course it's obvious that the, the blacks aren't the only thing you do either, is it? No, I started off as a potter, so I started making pots, um, but I always enjoy a challenge mm -hmm. and I enjoy creating ways of doing difficult technical things and making of the plaques was a difficult technical challenge as you've already understood because it took us a year to get it sorted. Yeah. Um, and also you know my partner Annie is mm -hmm. curator of Chepstow Museum and I've always been very interested in history particularly industrial archaeology uh, and for that reason it occurred to me that ceramics are an ideal material for interpretation of outdoor sites because they don't deteriorate. Mm -hmm. uh, they can be on a wall as, as plaques are in London for 150 years and Indeed. they still look as good as new. So not just plaques but paving slabs with images on, and paving slabs with writing on that people can walk over. Mm -hmm. It solves a lot of planning permission problems because yes, you can <laughs> take up yes. a paving slab yeah, and place it with a, uh, a slab with a picture on. Uh, and also pictures, photographs, paintings Brilliant. on tiles, and we've worked out a way of doing that very reasonably, very reasonably priced. Fantastic. Well, sort of talk us through the process. Somebody comes to you for a blue plaque. Uh, how, how, does it, how does it pan out from that? Well, I, I, I'm probably very unusual because I don't demand a design fee. Uh, you know, my feeling is that if, if someone has come to me, has found me, then they're probably going to go ahead with the project. So I'm quite prepared to produce a design and then tweak it several times for them until they're happy with it. Right, good. Um, and once they've signed it off, and particularly when it's got Welsh on it, they have to sign it off mm -hmm. and, they, mm -hmm. and they have to say, yes, this is absolutely correct when I send them the design. We use a computer Enough. and we create a three-dimensional plate, that's the best word, right. with the lettering in relief, in reverse, on the plate and then we press that into the clay right uh, and then put it on the potter's wheel turn the wheel cut it round right uh, and then leave it to dry very slowly very carefully for mm -hmm. a long time um, uh, and then when it's completely dry we put it on top of the kiln and the kiln's on and heat it up so it gets to about 150 degrees centigrade right. so it is really dry and then we fire it in the kiln up to a thousand degrees centigrade and then it turns into what is known as biscuit fired pottery. Right. So it's now permanent but it's porous, it's white. Yeah. When that's been done we apply a glaze all over the entire surface mm -hmm. uh, and then we clean off the letters very carefully with a sponge mm -hmm. and then we apply a transparent glaze over the top. Put it back in the kiln, heat it up to 1300 degrees centigrade this time, which makes it very hard, much harder than steel, mm -hmm. frost proof, completely frost proof, and colour fast for the next 100,000 years. Brilliant. It'll never change colour. Brilliant. That's excellent. And, uh, and as we can see behind us, uh, some excellent examples of a, a, a really cracking product. Uh, well, the cracking product is appropriate because these, of course, are here because they're rejects. Now, you know. You may, there's one obvious that's got a tiny hairline crack in it, but in every case, these aren't perfect, which is why we haven't used them. Right. Which is but why still, 
Still, they look good from here. Well, most people can't spot what's wrong with them, but I can, and I would be not happy to put up something on a building which is going to be there for hundreds of years, possibly, if I don't think it's perfect. Well, I must admit I can't see the faults, <laughs> but uh, there we are. <laughs>